Hello everyone, how are you folks doing? As you can see I got my jacket on. In Hawaii here it's in the 60s and when it's in the 60s we're freezing over here. We're not used to cold weather. <laughs> anyway, the topic of this video is Hawa talking about King Kalakaua and um, is a belief going around and it's very strong. It's a belief that uh, Hawaii's last king uh, was killed by drugs. Um, and some some people even say that uh, he was murdered by drugs. Um, so let's get started. A new study finds the UH researchers uh, misrepresented the U.S. Navy Surgeon General's autopsy report and neglected related takeover plot in the Hawaiian genocide. The evidence shows that Kalakaua was killed by medical manslaughter and probably murdered. Um, a new medical legal review of forensic and historic facts by Harvard trained public health expert and this is by Dr. Leonard G. Horowitz. So he's the one that's presenting the evidence. The evidence is that the University of Hawaii psychiatrist misrepresented autopsy findings um, at the time that King Kalakaua died of failing organ systems. And that was the uh, what they um, said that caused his death. Concealing obvious drug side effects and caretakers' negligence amounting to minimally manslaughter. Okay. Now, UH medical researchers publishing in the esteemed Hawaiian Journal of History, and I've read that, um, it's very interesting, but. Um, you know, no mention was made of the, the drugs, were found to have uh, breached common sense and ethics rules by fraudulently misrepresenting the last Hawaiian king's obvious debt from a combination of six prescribed and non-prescribed drugs. And these are the drugs, including um, opium, chloroform, marijuana, alcohol, cocaine, and nicotine. So the combination, it's believed now that the combination killed King Kalakaua. Now the new evidence in history of concealing medical legal facts explaining the king's mysterious death in 1891 raises justifiable outrage over growing evidence of murder and cover-up during the king's adversaries during the overthrow of the Hawaiian kingdom. Okay. The contested article was published by UH whose founders were directly involved in the coup d'etat. Okay. So now, the author of the charges of fraudulent concealment and misrepresentation by UH professors and manslaughter by deceased U.S. Navy Surgeon General of the Pacific Fleet Dr. George W. Woods is Dr. as I mentioned Dr. Leonard Horowitz an award-winning author, filmmaker, and whistleblower who conducted a review of psychiatrist John F. McDermott and Anthony P. S. Guerrero's Historical Clinical Pathological Conference report that Horowitz states is worse than bogus since it obviously misrepresents medical legal facts providing prima facie evidence of intentional concealments. So he's calling it bogus. Okay. Now, the UH publication raises probable cause to consider murder or manslaughter of the king aided and embedded by the founders of the university identified in Horowitz's review. Okay, 
Now, we got to go back in time and uh, take a look at what was going on in, during that period of history. So let's look at the, um, the late 1800s, the time of Kalakaua's death. During the late 1800s, slavery and the merchant marine commercialized the, f the so-called feel-good drugs. And that was opium, uh, alcohol, and sugar in Hawaii. While the kingdom's immigration laws favored open borders and European competition with the U.S. and China. Okay. Now, opium production during King Kalakaua's reign was exploding. Five years after his mysterious death, 41,000 tons were produced and shipped from Afghanistan by mariner merchants. So that was a big thing, opium and drugs. China used the bulk of it, a reported 39,000 tons, and Europe and America received the rest by sea through India and Hawaii, respectively. Now, I read on uh, China about the Boxer Rebellion, because the only thing that China would, was really interested in, in was the opium. And, but eventually, they, yeah, a lot of them got addicted to that stuff, and, you know... And that caused a lot of lot of tension with uh, Europeans, especially the British. Anyway, um, the mass market in America and tax revenue for the Kingdom of Hawaii as an entry port to the United States uh, was substantial. Okay. Now the king, uh, recognizing the commercial value of Hawaii's Pearl Harbor port. In East West trade sought partnerships with governments and businessmen to finance his family and nation. Um, the king even sought to establish at the time of his death a steam shipping enterprise that would directly compete against the companies already doing business in Hawaii. Okay, now Horowitz discovered that the widely known coup that overtook Hawaii's monarchy preceded the Harrison Narcotic Act passed by the U.S. Congress on February 9, 1909. Okay, now. The law, or this law, I should say, curtailed the flow of opium to the U.S. It was passed 18 years after King Kalakaua died on January 20th, 1891. Meaning that two decades of uninterrupted profits were gained by the King's death and subsequently Queen Liliokalani's imprisonment. Okay. Historic records now reveal the King died of hushed up drug intoxications, mainly from opium and chloroform facts concealed in medical science in the lay press until today, until now. Now, here we're going to talk about the evidence for negligence and medical uh, manslaughter next. Okay? By 1891, it was common knowledge in medicine that opium and chloroform being prescribed for the king were dangerous drugs. Nearly 200 years earlier, British physician John Jones published Mysteries of Opium Revealed, calling attention to the risks of excessive use of opium and its adverse effects. Other books about opium were published by George Young in 1750, The Treatise on Opium, and in 1793, Samuel Crump published The Inquiry into the Nature and Properties of Opium. Both experts mentioned addiction and withdrawal symptom, symptoms. In the treatise on the Materia Medica, William Colin, Colin admitted in 1808 that opium interrupts message flow from nerves to brain and vice versa, causing the abolishment of all pain sensitivity and any other irritation from any part of the system. So that's the effect of the uh, opium. 
Accordingly, by the time King Kalakaua's physicians at Queen's Hospital in Honolulu prescribed for him opium, the doctors undoubtedly knew or should have known this drug was risky and potentially deadly, as reported by medical doctor and anesthesiologist Danilo Friar Duarte in his comprehensive review of opium. Okay? Now, the belief that opium would not cause individual or collective damage started to tumble in 1830. And in 1860, the struggle had become a medical and social problem as a function of mortality data. According to these data, one third of all lethal poisonings were due to opium overdose, taken both as a source of pleasure and with suicide intentions. Okay? Now, but opium was not the only drug being uh, regularly given to King Kalakaua. The king was being prescribed chlorodyne, containing a mixture of alcohol, cannabis, and chloroform besides opium. So, and this is believed that the combination is what killed him. And this evidence, this is evidence of fraudulent concealment and an ongoing conspiracy to defraud the public. It is well established and widely known that chloroform causes virtually all of the symptoms suffered by the king, and including liver, kidney, heart, and nervous system problems. And this fact was obviously secreted, not simply grossly neglected, but intentionally concealed by the UH authors conducting a retrospective study of the king's autopsy report by U.S. Navy Surgeon General Woods. So, okay, now it is unreasonable to conclude simple negligence. Okay, doctors commonly know chloroform causes these ailments, and that the six drug combination the king consumed was obviously lethal. But these clear and convincing facts and acts of the doctors caring for the king were purposely hushed up by UH medical investigators Guerrero and McDermott. Okay, so folks, those are the facts. Remember what happened, and I kind of think, when I think about this, I think about what happened to Michael Jackson. Remember the doctor? And um, how the doctor um, was accused of prescribing um, medications that eventually killed him? Uh, kill Michael Jackson. Well, it kind of, it, it kind of like, it reminds me of that situation and how the doctor was accused of that. So it's the same thing. But anyway, sadly, you know, who who is to know? You know, I think the the combination. If they knew that it was going to kill the king, they shouldn't have given him all six of those drugs or they should have you know to save his life but then again people say well they killed him and they purposely so whether we know it that actually you know was negligence or they purposely did it or killed him we will never know but those are the facts and a lot of it points to actually that they did kill our king Kamakawa that is really, really, if that's true, then that is very, very sad. And uh, let, the, let the truth be known. And I think people should know the truth. And it should come out and we should, you know, move forward on that and, and, and know the truth, what truly happened back then to our king. Okay. Well, that's it, folks. Uh, Hope you enjoyed this little history lesson. Mahalo for watching, and holy ho! ho.